Hey guys, it's Malls. Thanks so much for listening to Please Advise. Just a quick message before the show. Don't forget to subscribe on iTunes. It's super helpful for us and super helpful for you. You can also call 323-450-7408 to get your calls on the show. Again, 323-450-7408. Or email askpleaseadvise at gmail.com with your voice notes or emails. Thanks so much. Hey, you guys, it's Malls. Welcome to Please Advise, episode 151. I am swallowing a tangerine from my hairdresser's garden. Okay, so I'm really excited to be here today because we have a guest that I hunted down through the internet through. You guys may know Stephen Ray Morris, who does the Lifetime podcast with me. This like kind of like loser, like very small podcast called My Favorite Murder. Um, <laughs> it's like they're really struggling, so shout out to them. And then also this other podcast, the Worst Ever podcast, which I am a huge fan of because my biological sister, Jody Sweeten, was actually their first guest. Um, how are you today, my guest? I am good. I'm happy to be here. Okay, now tell everyone your name. Allah Khaled. Okay. Yeah. No, but you also go by Alec Led. Alec Led. And do you which or which name are you using professionally now? Well, here's the deal. I'm reinventing myself after January. Okay. So it'll, a rebrand. It's going to be a rebrand, and I think I'm going to go full time a la Khaled. I think that's the perfect way to go. Yeah. My friend has like an Americanized name that he uses because when he moved here from Korea as a child, he was like, his name's Sun Jin Lee. And he <laughs> decided he was going to go by Sunny Lee when he moved here. When he's like six years old, he's like, Mom, I don't want to be Sun Jin anymore. I'm Sunny. And he said to me recently, he's like, I just realized, like, I'm just putting my old name on my my real name on my scripts now. He's like, I don't have any reason to, like, have this whitewashed name that I made up as a kid. Well, times are different now, so it's easier to have if anything, strange it's better. names. Yeah, no, it's 100% better. Yeah. So tell me, how did you, I know that, I know obviously it's a shortening of your name. And I know Mindy Kaling did the exact same thing. Like, Kaling is, like, one syllable of her full last name. How did you go with Alec Ladd? Okay, so it's really – it's a dumb story, but it's, I guess, good. So I I was auditioning here in L.A. Mm-hmm. Um, and as a la, mm-hmm. and I would get pigeonholed into, like, certain categories because yeah. at that time in the 90s, it was pretty – they they see your name, they see your face, and they think you can only be one thing. Absolutely. So I was still working here and there, but yeah. just not as much um, as I should be. I remember you said on the show that like there was a point in your career where like every director that worked with you like would walk up to you and be like, hey, I really fought for you for this part. It still happens. Yeah. It still happens. I mean, the industry is very condescending. Yeah. it's They're all assholes, but I enjoy it. I think that's part of the reason why I like it so much. Totally. Yeah. I always say that. I'm like, the person who was the meanest to me on the phone this year was probably the nicest person in 11 years because they like... We're flat out. We're like, I don't like your script. I don't get why you wrote it. And I don't know where I'd sell it. So come back to me when you have something I can do something with. And I was, everyone was like mortified for me that I like told. I was like, no, that's like the nicest thing anyone's ever done. It's like he was fully like, I don't like your work. Like, yeah. No. And that's <laughs> the only way. You. How can you improve if you don't right? know, you know, and yeah. certain directors and producers, they have a certain style. And this is, so you got to learn to write for that, you know, if you want to, totally. yeah, so whatever. So I was auditioning and stuff. And then, um, my friend was doing the reboot of fantasy Island. Okay. Not to brag. Um, in Hawaii. So she was doing like a guest star episode. And, um, right before I was just letting my agents know that I need to be booked out. Cause she invited me to go. Cause they gave her two tickets and hotel rooms and the whole yes, bit. So I was like, I'm yeah. going to Hawaii. So, um, I was like, I'm going to leave for a week for Hawaii. But that day I had an audition uh-huh. and they just sort of, um, pitched me without my picture or whatever. And they said, we want you to change your name. Mm. And I said, well, what do you mean? And I, in my head, I'm going, Oh, my parents are going to, fucking kill me if i change my name and i was just like, in my head thinking about hawaii yeah so i was yeah, like i yeah. gotta go i want to get out of here you know and i was like fine let's just change my name they're like well what do you want your name to be uh-huh. and i go i don't know and i go a la khaled a la khaled a la khaled a la khaled alec led alec led alec led yeah they go what i go alec led but I want it to be different, so put two D's at the end. Yes. <laughs> so they're like, okay. So they submitted me. They submitted me for this. Uh, was it the WB at the time? Yeah, D- WB at the time. Uh-huh. Um, for Joey Jack, Zoe Jack, 
Duncan oh. and Jane, whatever that yeah. show was. Zoe, Duncan, Jack, and Jane. Yes. Okay. So <laughs> this is me. I went on the audition. As, I went on the audition as Alec Led. Uh -huh. I booked the job. You were Zoe? Uh, no, I was a guest star. Oh, okay. I booked the job. And from that moment on, I had to be Alec Led because I had to change my name through with SAG. So that's what I was going to ask. I was like, what's your SAG name? It's Alec Led. Okay, cool. So how are you? What are you going to do now? Like, can you change your name through yeah. SAG? I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm sure people yeah, yeah. do all the time. Yeah, I'll just rechange it. That's great. I'm yeah. excited for your new new year yeah, I'm doing of it. being I'm doing yourself. It. I'm doing it all. So, Christina, like, literally the most fascinating life story. <laughs> they, I love that you just guys, you didn't, first of all, I should say two things. One, we had guests here yesterday when I told them you were coming and who your co-host is, Christine Lakin from Step by Step. Right. My friend who was sitting right where you're sitting, she was like, tell her that she's a queer icon. Is she really? <laughs> yeah, because like I guess like Al was a big sexual awakening for a lot of young lesbians and bisexual women because, first of all, I mean, Al was not supposed to be the hot one on the show. The, right. the hot one was supposed to be, I think, Dana or something, yeah, like the oldest one. Angie the, or Stacey Keenan. The one who went crazy. Uh, Angela. Yeah, yeah, she was supposed to be the hot one. Yeah. Sorry, I, I don't, I mean, I don't know if she's crazy. I don't like to use that word. But Allegedly. She, yeah, she fell off, you know, right. like the, the her co-stars don't know her anymore. But Al was always the hot one, and every guy in school was so in love with Al, and I guess every girl was so in love with Al too. So she was like, well, tell she was her like the prototypical she... like cool girl. Where yeah, she would, like you would eat wings with her and then like hook up. I guess. Yeah, it's so funny because I never really, I never really watched. The <laughs> I don't know show. what dudes are into. <laughs> yeah, I eat wings and hook up. Um, that's like what I'm into. Um, but yeah, no, I, I was. We were talking about it yesterday. They were kind of like a white trash family. Yeah. They were like, first of all, like Suzanne Summers and Patrick Duffy still like definitely fucked. Like they had kind of just gotten married, like right. whatever that, that like was going on there. And then like the kids were all so different and didn't ever seem watched or taken after, like taken care of. And then there was like basically a drug dealer character who lived <laughs> in like the in the basement, Cody. Right, and then, and then he and had then, his, and, his. Well, we did some fun IMDb deep diving on him yesterday, and um, it was like you know they had a lot of they had an awful lot of facts about him. It said that he was raised in the San Fernando Valley of of California, which they made it seem like you know like whenever you read anything about LA, it's just so funny because you live here and you know like. Oh, that's like really shitty, actually. Yeah, the regions tell a big story. Yeah, but like on IMDb, it's like he was raised in like California's San Fernando Valley. And we were like, <laughs> we had a good one about that. I do love the valley, though. Well, I, mean, I lived in Van Nuys for 10 years. Okay. Yeah, Van Nuys. It's where my dog trainer used to live. She Which, doesn't talk to me right now, but. Well, I've met your dog. No, I think she got <laughs> mad at me because she wanted me to fix her computer. Oh, really? Yeah, and I was like, I mean, like, I can build an internet thing because, like, I can't fix, a, um, like, a PC. Like, I'm not, like, a, I'm not the IT guy. You yeah, well, that's why when... You take it down to me. I'm so not tech... Like, I don't understand. Like, Christine does all our Instagram stuff mm -hmm. because I still can't figure out the Instagram. Like, I don't understand it. And, like... Forget Snapchat. I'll never understand. Well, the it. first red flag there is that you call it the Instagram. The whatever. Instagram. Oh, well, okay, so whatever Instagram. <laughs> yeah, and, and then so I'm like, I can do Twitter because I sort of started on the Twitter went on the Twitter on, on the Twitter. Twitter <laughs> uh, on the, I started on Twitter when early, it's on. early on. So it was like, so now Twitter's making change. Like I was trying to like promote the show and oh, i was like 40 and i couldn't figure out why i was getting so many characters and i was like oh <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. it's like it's kind of a lot and like at first i was like we don't need 240 I'm, my first tweet as soon as i got 240 unlocked 280 like, 280. 280 yeah my first tweet at once i got that many unlocked i was like oh forget it like i just like write like novels on there now well i i mean i'm not I don't. Ha I just. Are you a purist? Do you? Yeah, I, I mean, I'm a phone call kind of guy. You are. Like, I don't text me. I don't. I'm not texting you really? back. I'll call you back. Okay. okay. Like, just call me. I'd rather spend five minutes on the phone rather than twenty minutes texting back and forth. I like that. That's concise. Yeah, I agree. I just call me. I'm like, it, it, if it's easier. There are times where I'm just like, yes, but it is. You know, millennials find that very jarring. Like, if you call, they're like, "What are you doing?" Well, that's me. <laughs> are you serious? Yeah, I hate it. I, I, I just like Christine loves to text. And I'm like, 
just fucking call me. Like, well, it's the vol. Some people don't. They have volume issues where it's like this could have been. You will find that when you listen to our callers, this could have been <laughs> two sentences. But for some reason, it's 15 and you sent each sentence individually. Like, I get to a point where I'm like, if that thing goes off one more time, I'm going to lose my fucking mind. Like, I can't listen to the the bloop, bloop, bloop anymore. Well, I, I listen, just f- from now on, just call me. Like, the, even the email. I'm <laughs> I just will. like, I lose so many emails. I'm like going, I don't know where this email is, you know. But I would have never, when you gave us your number yesterday, I would have never called you. Like, I would have I would have sent a text. I know. But then I would have called you back. Okay. <laughs> I would have just like, that would have worked. Yeah. worked. That would have been fine. By the way, like, Christine is so jealous that I'm here right now. She is? Yeah. She Why? Would, she was what? supposed to come do the Lifetime podcast this season. But oh, I don't she, think we should be like, we ever really like pinned it down. That's probably the reason. She's just, well, she's in the middle of shooting the second season of Hollywood Darlings. When my biological, so this is, this is the bit. After, well, I just got bit by a pit bull last year. Oh. And there was like a series of five surgeries. And he just had his last one, like, very recently. He only has, like, four teeth now. Oh. But um, I had gotten a ticket to... <laughs> so fucking lame. So, obviously, I grew up watching Full House, right? right? It was, like, my show. Loved it. I remember it ending. I remember crying, like, as they did the final curtain call. Like, very, like, just, like, only child. This is all I have. And these are th- these are my friends. They're gone now. Um, and so... I had gone to Dancing with the Stars with a friend who had worked at ABC. So she got us these tickets, which, by the way, they said, you know, they seat you, like, depending on your attractiveness. Did you know that? I've been to several Dancing with the Stars. Okay. So, okay. You know. Um, So I wound up being seated directly in front of Jody Sweeten's parents. So, like, Ugh. every opportunity, my friend was, like, trying to, like, just trying to, they, and by the way, like, their, like, hot gossip or whatever is, like, are we going to Cantor's after after this? Like, right. it's not, it's very normal, very, like, sweet. Right. They're parents, you know? Right. And every time my friend's trying to talk to me, I'm going, like, shut the fuck up. I'm listening to Jody Sweet's parents. Shut up. Because I'm, like, e- this is the eavesdropping opportunity. But I'm a writer. I need to hear everything. So... Um, my obsession, obsession with Jody Speed and then goes into overdrive at that point. So I am a very like obsessive one track mind person. Like there's an Aaron Carter doll around here because people just over there. people just see that I start to get into things and then I I can't let it go. So um and Aaron Carter was a brief moment as well. And then my friend called me and was like, Yeah, have to stop talking about Aaron Carter. I think he's gonna die or something. Well, did you yeah, we'll yeah. go to that. Yeah, but yeah. he yeah. He's not doing well. Well, I heard he's getting himself back together. Well, I mean, you know, it's oh, I think it's a, I think it's an on again, off again roller coaster ride over there. But you know what? God bless. Look, honestly, there's been a lot of loss in that family. Anyway, <laughs> Wags gets attacked. At this point, I remember when we were leaving, we were walking out of Dancing with the Stars. You go past Erewhon, as you know. Mm-hmm. Jaden Smith is sitting at Erewhon. It's all the stars are all aligning. There, we get a table at Wood Ranch Grill without a wait. It's all all these things are happening. And I'm like, you know, I'm Meredith. I'm doing it. Two copies of Jody Sweeten's book right now. So I ordered them on uh, Amazon. And then the day that I had to leave Wags at VCA West LA, my Jody Sweeten book comes. And so I pour my like life into this book over the next like three days when my dog's in the hospital. And... I just started calling her my biological sister and it turned into this whole like where I would just like factually refer to her as my biological sister, which is she's an only child from Long Beach. Like, and, but people have started to believe it. And I heard that in my favorite murder book and uh, my favorite murder Facebook group recently, someone said, like, you guys have to go back and listen to the Lifetime unauthorized full house story podcast because molly's biological sister is with jody sweeten and has a lot of really good insight (laughs) oh no i've actually like convinced people that i'm obsessed with her and i believe she's my biological sister to the extent that one of her ex-husbands tweeted at me about where i can go get sliding scale mental (laughs) health oh my god so it's turned into this like whole thing where I have people that have worked on Hollywood Darlings as like producers in my life and they're like, oh, we got to get you guys together. And I'm like, no, I can never meet her. Like, you don't want to meet her? No. 
I no. was going to say, if they have a rap party, because I'll end up going. I mean, I'm yes, I want to go. Me. I guess uh, I want to go. I mean, the answer is yes, I want to go. But like, also, I can't go, but I do. But if you go, how are you going to act? Totally fine. Okay. I don't know. Listen, malls. I don't know you that well. I think Look, like- I started a website with the name of Celebrity. Okay. I've been around the block. I know I know right. my celebs. Okay, but, good. Um, I think I'll probably be more excited to see like Al from Step by Step. Yeah, well. You're going to come on my podcast. I would love that. No, 100%. Am I interesting enough? You guys have, like, real interesting people. It's only because we make them interesting. Okay. <laughs> Nicole, Nicole Tom is fascinating. I had See, no idea. She Here's the funny thing about Nicole Tom. So we've known Nicole for, like, 20 years, let's say. Yes. Do you know who that is? Is that from The Nanny? Yes. 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 Congratulations. And, Be- and Beethoven. Yes. yes. Yeah, yeah. So Rice, is she, like, really weirdest smart name. or something like that? Um, uh, well, <laughs> I mean, I, I think love- you're thinking of, uh, Stacey, um, Keenan. Yeah, there's some Stacey, Stacey Keenan's a lawyer. She's yeah. very smart. Or Winnie from, uh, Wonder Years is a math teacher. Yeah. So, um, Nicole Tom, so we've known her for so long. Yeah. Right? And she's, I have to tell you, and we, from acting class, right? Yeah. She's probably one of the most talented people I know, and it's <laughs> it's it bothers me that she's not constantly working. Yeah, I would because she is, she is working. Didn't she just do? She does when she's working. She's working, but yeah. like she needs to be like. There's got to be a vehicle for her because yes, she's so fucking good. I did hear you say that like she's gonna be like when cool like when Coolidge steps down like she and I was like I could see that yeah, like I could totally see that she's but she's so scatterbrained right and I can say that because she's my friend and I would tell her sure. to her face she's so scatterbrained that you're like Nicole you're like out of your mind yeah but things shitty things happen to her <laughs> all the time yeah like all the time so when we were doing the live show, worst ever, <laughs> we kept wanting to get Nicole on there. And she's like, I don't, ha- I don't have a story. You know, yeah. it's actually dogs. Like, <laughs> I'm like, Nicole, you have you have to have stories. So so the progression of the podcast, we ended up doing this podcast. And I was like, let's just fucking bring Nicole Tom on. So we bring her. And then all these stories that we had never heard of. The just water popped skiing up. thing. I was, was like, dying. I mean, it's crazy. I was dying. It's crazy. So I was dying. For you guys back at home who don't know, back at home. You guys listening, you don't know. Um, th- their podcast basically is about all of the worst things that have happened to a person, which is obviously a great angle to have because those are the stories you want to hear. Well, yeah, but you want to make that celebrity or that whatever person humanize, humanize them. them. Relatable, sure. yeah. And there's, I mean, it's not the most relatable story that uh, she was asked to do a charity <laughs> jet ski race out to like Catalina or something. Yeah. And she chose not to wear a wetsuit because she looked great in her bikini or something. Like, obviously, like, I mean, a jet ski out to Catalina is like, that's insane. Like, that's, I mean, don't people take planes there? Uh, Or helicopters? Yeah, yeah. She's, listen, Not like I said, it just, it, her stories, you're just like, this can't be possible. This cannot, the fact that she did it in the first place, she's the most unathletic person I know. Right. (laughs) You know? And so, of course, like, so she had a boyfriend who you guys didn't name, but like, I went on Who's Dated Who, my favorite website after, and I think I put it together who the boyfriend was. Who do you think it was? Brian Austin Green. No. Oh, because someone like left her in the dust. And I was like looking, I was like, well, the douchiest person on this who's dated whose page is Brian Austin Green. No, I think, uh, and I don't know if it's true, and I think who it was, because I was someone that she dated for a while who had a twin. Oh, okay. Who was an actor also. Oh, Jason Jeremy London? No. Oh. No, I forget his name. He's, he, he did like... Uh, Ashton Kutcher has a twin, but he's... No. He, there's no it was no one big, trust me. Can you imagine being Ashton Kutcher's twin and being I didn't like know that Ashton track. Kutcher had a twin. Yeah, he's like hidden away in Ohio or wherever Ashton Kutcher's from. Like, he's not, he's not palatable. Or something. Like, identical twin? No. Oh, okay. Like, and that's like the bummer of it. You know, like, they're... Oh. You know, I mean, like, there's plenty of, you know, to be the lesser great looking twin. <laughs> that's Scarlett got Johansson a has a twin brother. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah I mean, these people really? with their mm-hmm. random ass twins. By the way, she's dating that guy from SNL that I thought was going to be my boyfriend. Which one? Colin Jost or whatever. Oh, really? Yeah. They came out like yesterday as a couple. I didn't really think he was going to be my boyfriend. But like every time I saw him, I was like, he's cute. I would here's, date him. Here's the thing, and though. I never think that about anyone. He's from Staten Island. Yeah. And so you would have to go to Staten Island for the holidays every year. I wouldn't have to do anything. Uh, it's just. But it's close enough to the city. It's just. Nah, a, just it's not a, that close. 
It's, it's just on the bridge. Uh, Christine's from Brooklyn. Yeah. She's very she's very defensive the ver- about the her Verrazano. Boroughs. That's it. Just go over the Yeah, Verrazano. that's horrible traffic most of the time. All right. Take the ferry. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if there's when there's a ferry involved, that makes me nervous. But he's oddly friends with like, so you are a reality TV person. Right. Southern charm. Are you familiar? Obsessed. So he's like old buds with Shep Rose. Who, which are looking forward to his well, relationship. I'm not, listen, I'm not. I'm, oh, I'm sorry, Wags. I'm I'm not really looking forward to right. relationship because it looks really dumb. <laughs> so bad. And it looks so scripted, but not scripted. Yeah, right. like the whole like commercial saying like, he's like, I might even be in love with my producer. Like, did you see that thing where he's like. No, the best is when he's quoting Shakespeare. <laughs> yeah, and I was yeah, yeah. like, what? Well, he does a lot of that. And also, you know, his drinking problem seems to be quite severe like because someone will write to him like Shep like you know you're unappreciative and a jerk and he'll be like go get your shine box idiot and I'm like did you just oh, wow. tell someone to shine your shoes like he really goes off like with not just the old school disses but like just clearly belligerently drunk on Twitter responding to like you know trolls but like you it's usually it's just like the well meaning like lower middle class seeming trolls you know what I mean he's very classist it's incredibly I, interesting I was surprised that they did a spin off well that was my thing is I th- said there was no way that they were gonna give their golden boy like the shit edit that they gave him on season uh, the last season right and then say like oh we're gonna send him into the world right I mean this is a guy Christina like he had like liver failure, like almost like he had to, he had to like cut back on drinking because he obviously was doing cocaine all the time. Um, there was one scene this season where he had visible coke boogers when Cameron came and woke him up at his apartment. And like, you can just tell like that lifestyle. You just know it when you see it. And um, he, he, his story this season was basically like shop. Like if you don't quit drinking, like you're going to have liver failure. And now they're like, well, we should find this guy a lady. And like, I it's don't think a, that's the solution. I know, it's just, I, it was such a weird, I was like, wait, what's happening? He's got his own. I, I love the spinoff of Savannah. Oh, I haven't seen that yet. I say, I save shows like that for depression. Like where I'm like, when I have a big bout of depression, I'm going to like save it for that. So you know what I save for? Uh, depression? <laughs> for any, like uh, days that I know there's nothing going to be on. Like yeah. I just stockpile um Cheaters. Oh yeah, vintage I heard you say cheaters. That. Yeah, yeah. I'm obsessed with it. Oh well, so what's okay? I didn't. I've never seen cheaters. So it's like you like someone had like someone. So first of all, okay. it's the show started in Dallas, Texas. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I've seen cheaters. Yeah, it's it's, a, it's, it's trash, but it's good. Uh, it's it's fun trash. fucking amazing. Yeah. Okay. So it started in Dallas, Texas. So it's like all these Dallas people, right? Mm-hmm. On which, by the way, I lived in Dallas for five years. There's uh, kudos to Dallas, whatever. No, I yeah, love Dallas. I, love I would Dallas. love to have a house in Texas. So they get hired mm-hmm. to t- investigate. They do, like, for weeks at a time, follow the mate to uh-huh. see if they're cheating. Hidden cameras. If, like... A lot of black and white footage It's all well, It's all black and white. Oh, it's all yeah. a lot of, like, covering up the face. Um, and then they confront them... <laughs> And it's full on my live, nightmare live. Like they'll like go in the, with the camera live, live like. into restaurants. They just bombard them into restaurants, catch them. There's a lot of chasing and running and hitting. It's fucking crazy. So how do they get the? Sometimes the, they're like in the middle of the act. Or yeah. Like, oh yeah. yeah. Okay. So how do they get the cheaters to? Because to show thing, their face. Yeah. Or to, to sign the release. Because like my thing with intervention is that like I can't believe that after 18 seasons people are still believing would you like to be in a documentary about addiction like well, I, I'm going to talk about that for a second I know this is not a reality show th- thing but I, there's no we can I, talk I, about I, it all day I, I heard uh, the um, Noel couple podcasts no, yes. yeah. and so you were talking about that yeah. and, and the catfish thing that yeah. you were talking about which I did not know that until you said that yeah. which I want to get into that they too. retroactively find like yeah it's like house hunters yeah. but like with people you don't ever want to get that email it's like you don't happen to be right. in an online relationship with someone who lies to you right was, that was fascinating that I did not know they did that but yeah. um, so with cheaters so I think it was because it was in the 80s I think they shot it I feel like it was 80s well I, I think it started in the 80s and then it moved to the 2000s but I, it's it, so it's had a long run. It's I mean, like you can tell date. by the equipment that they're using. Okay, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, it goes from, like, the video camera with the screen that pops out to... Uh, it started in the year 2000. 
Oh, it did? Mm-hmm. Well, fuck me. Hell yeah. All right. Good All right. for them. So, it feels like the 80s to Yeah, me. it felt like the 80s. But um, so some of them. Oh. What? The current host of the show is Clark Gable's great grandson. Right. He goes by Clark Gable. Yeah. <laughs> no, he does not. Clark Swear James to God. Gable. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's like three hosts that in the all the seasons are like three hosts total. Uh, that is really The funny. one before that was named Joey Greco. Joey Greco. He's oh, the I, famous oh, one. Oh, I know yeah. Joey Greco. Yeah. Okay. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. And then there's one Tommy other Tommy Habib. Yeah. And so, wait, do you also know that uh, Matthew Perry and Keith Morrison are related somehow? Like, no. Keith Morrison is Matthew Perry's stepdad or something like that? No. Yeah, it's crazy. There's TV's a, it's a crazy business. Continue on. So, so Peter. So, they, some of them will not sign the release, but they blur out the face. <laughs> right. But yeah. here's what's fascinating, what fascinated me, being in TV. Yeah. You will see them in front of, like, places like Bank of America and the logo of Bank of America showing. I'm, like, going, how is that legal? Yeah. Like, how is that possible? Or you'll see them at the Chili's and yeah. the Chili sign is visible. <laughs> and I'm going, what, how are they getting away with that? So it, that's what – that stuff fascinates that's, me. Yeah, that's yeah. where you get hooked. I yeah. know, I know. It sucks. To, that, well, this is the best and worst part of understanding television production is that, like, that is what you're actually watching. Right. So, like, when I'm watching a reality show, I'm always trying to undo the editing. Always. I I worked on one of the darkest shows out there called Clean House. Um, and they had us with Niecy Nash where she'd be like, girl, you need to get your life yes, together. And yes, then they'd yes, throw yes. like a big yard sale. Yeah. But like what you wouldn't know. And like, this is like my favorite episode. And like, God bless, like allegedly. Wait, who what knows? did you do on it? I was um, I started out as a tape logger. And then I um, this was in my early 20s. And then I went to assistant night editor. So I was like logging all this raw footage with which by the way like i my mind heaven is like a place that you go and you shut your eyes and like before your eyes just like all of the um unedited real world raw footage just starts playing in front of you when you get to watch like everything from the beginning because that is i love unedited footage i we worked on a show too that i was so upset when i saw the the show all cut together because I was like, man, like it was so much better when it was just raw footage. Like now that there's these wipey things and everything, it's yeah. making me so sad. Yeah. So um, this woman's classic example of like how they hide things away. So this woman in this one, t- this one tape or in the episode, she just had like a kooky habit of collecting stuffed and real monkeys. Like she just loved stuffed and real monkeys and she had like three real monkeys and like Like real like real real life monkeys yeah like yeah like marsupials and like and then she had um like like hundreds and thousands of stuffed monkeys so her husband was just kind of this like broken passive man for as far as we were concerned that like just let her like collect these monkeys and couldn't say no to her and so come to find out in real life like the backstory is that in the 60s 50s and 60s like sears used to sell exotic animals in the window and she would go by with her dad and like they'd have like ferrets and lizards and like all sorts of shit and then they also had monkeys and she'd always ask her dad can i have a monkey her dad would be like no and then like he would be so annoyed with her begging for this monkey that like after they would get home he'd like beat and molest her and like so she has this obsession now with, like, ha- getting monkeys and having monkeys. But, like, all you saw on the show was, like, girl, you got to clean up your monkey collection. <laughs> and so, like, it's, like, none of the backstory. Like, you just think this woman has, like, this kind of whimsical hobby. But, like, the reality of it or another one where, like, they were, like, wow, like, Susan has an impressive glass bottle right. collection. And it was all, like, jack bottles with the labels ripped off, like, for TV. And it's, like, no, she doesn't collect glass bottles she drinks a bottle of jack in the closet every night so like it was very like it was like all the fun of hoarders and intervention minus the reality of it Uh, it's a 30 it's a half hour show hour i think oh it's an hour and they still an hour because they Uh, do they do a makeover got it yeah so it's like kind of like the tlc like uh i've done two makeover shows okay one was called mix it up that courtney cox and yeah david arquette um yeah produced produced yeah so they were at my house like in van nuys like yes. every day have for you ever a been week. to sun- uh sunday dinner at courtney's no i wish uh i don't th- i i went once with my ex you're not i don't think you're missing anything but like that's her famous thing oh really it's like she has her sunday dinners what was interesting because it was at the time where she was trying to get pregnant okay 
And so like she like she's sitting in my living room talking about like the doctors and the whole bit. So it was like she was very sweet. David's fucking crazy, but so fun. Yeah. Um, He's sober now, right? I mean, who knows? I don't know. He hasn't been on Howard in a long time, which I find strange. Maybe they had a falling out. Well, did you listen to last week's? Because mm-hmm. something happened with George Decay. Oh, yeah. What was the letter that he wrote? Uh, I think he wrote, no, I think he basically wrote like one of those like bullshit half ass apologies. It was kind of like. And blamed like the Stern show or something? I mean, he said, yeah, he said for years. Is that a monkey? No, that's Secret Baby. <laughs> oh, so, okay. Secret Baby is my next door neighbor is just one day I started to hear his baby crying. And I was like, we have to go to our call soon. And one day I just started to hear these babies crying. And I was like, I was like, did she take up a babysitting gig? Like, what's going on? I am so oblivious. I didn't even, re- well, to be honest, she held the baby very wide. Like, it, she didn't get big. She didn't, like, get oh, I see. frontally bigger. Right. She just seemed like she was stressed and gaining a lot of weight, which, to be honest, I was like, look, I- I'm in construction too, lady. Like, I get it. You're eating takeout all the time. Like, who knows what's going on over there? Turns out she was pregnant, and that's their baby, and it's real. And so it used to be just on Tuesdays I would hear it cry, and it started to be like this thing on my Twitter where I'm like, secret baby is back. <laughs> like, I really thought they were like hoarding a baby in their house, or she was taking on a baby. No, that's their like actual baby, and you just very rarely hear it. Well, my sister, I just found out she was pregnant. Congratulations. Thank you. But I was there... Uh, while she was four months pregnant uh-huh. and I thought she had, I was only there for two weeks. Oh, yeah, I mean, two yeah, days, two that, days. Yeah. And I was like, Oh, she's, she's gaining weight. You know, she's stressed out, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Plus my, my mom's side of the family, the Khaled, Khaled, my brother's, that he looks like my mom's side of the family. Yeah. It's more there. The, I would never put you two in a lineup and think you were siblings. Well, ever. as kids, I wish I had a child. We used to look like twins. That's so funny. Yeah. Um, but so that side of the family is bigger. Yeah. So I was like, Oh, she's just getting weight. And yeah. then, um, we had a funeral. <laughs> Not to brag. And she, she went and all my cousins were there and stuff. And they were like, are you pregnant? Did you gain weight? <laughs> And so she was nervous. It's a fam. Yeah. You know what so, I mean? Well, my family is very br- brutally honest. Like they, yeah. they'll just go, "Oh, you look fat." They, that's just n- how they are. Nice. That's yeah. just how they are. <laughs> my my family is the same way. Yeah. Well, like I'll go for I haven't seen them in a year or whatever. I'll visit them for the holidays and they'll be like, "Oh, hey, it's so great to see you. You've gained weight." Yeah, right off the bat. <laughs> right, right, right. Just right off the bat. So, um, nice. and I was just being nice. So I was like, "I'm not going to say anything," but she looks like she's gained a lot of weight. Blah blah blah. She's now four months pregnant. She calls me and she goes, listen, I need to. And she calls me, speaking of names, she calls me Allah. Yeah. Because as kids, that's what in Texas and Louisiana, they used to call me Allah. They could never say my name right. Yeah. So she just grew up saying it. She's 10 years younger than I am. She's like, oh, I just, in case someone calls you, I just want to let you know that um, I'm pregnant. And I was like, what? I go, and I was wondering, she goes, she goes, yeah, I'm pregnant, but everyone was commenting, and I didn't say I was to them I was pregnant. But if they ask you, yes, I am pregnant, but no one knows because I haven't been the doctor yet. Oh, <laughs> and I go <laughs> four months is kind I know, of far I go, along. I go, what do you mean you haven't been to the doctor? She goes, I just I'm so crazy busy. She goes, I've had three girls. It's not like I don't know what's going on. Like I'm pregnant. I'll yeah. you know. So, anyways, luckily she's having a boy. Okay. So yeah, she's doing March, but I was like. So it's rough when you don't know if someone's pregnant and well, you don't want to. Also, boys sit differently. Yeah. They do in the body. And, yeah, like, yeah. and that's why now it all makes sense that she was holy, having a more wide pregnancy. Yeah. Than... Is Secret Baby a boy? Secret Baby is a boy. Got yeah. See, and by the way, like, I don't know, man. Like, they're, they're Mexican and they have traditional Mexican names. And so they just don't, I don't, they don't make sense to me. And I don't understand, like, what's, what they're saying when they say, their names, they're English speaking from America, but they have, I don't know the husband's name and the baby's name. So they've told you the names? And you yeah, just don't like know. three times. And I just like space. Like as soon as they start talking, I just space because I'm like, oh, I don't know that word. Well, again, with the names, I'm bad with names because I always feel like I have to make sure they get my name right. <laughs> right. So I'm not listening to their name because right. I'm, cor- I'm overcorrecting my name. Yeah. So I, I'm horrible with names. It's it's rough, too, and it makes you feel like a sociopath, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, because yeah. you you know you're not. Yeah, you're just like I have poor facial recognition. I'm also like practically yeah. legally blind. Um, and two, yeah, like you know, I kind of space out. Yeah. Um, Christina, do Christina's chomping at the bit. Know, we have to take our phone out. calls. I know we have to take <laughs> our phone calls because we have to uh, watch a Lifetime original movie on Instagram live stream after this. So. Seriously? Uh, we have, we, like so Instagram live stream. We have to like watch the movie on that. So people are going to watch us watching the movie. Oh. I See, don't know. I would man. not even know how to do that. It's like one of the perks of if like you subscribe to the show, people pay a dollar a month to like watch me watch an episode of TV. And you're con- so it's like people's couch, yeah, kind of, yeah. And so, like, we'll all watch it together. We'll make commentary during this one. I'll probably fold my laundry that's been on my couch, but yeah, I loved people's couch, even though I didn't want to love it. Yeah, I've wanted to hate it actually. I thought Julie it was Julie and Brandy are the nicest, they're I, well, really great. I see them all the time, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're doing around. a lot of stuff. They have a podcast now, yeah. I did it, Dumb Gay Politics or something, yeah, it's yeah. Called, yeah. I saw them on um, Bravo Andy's show. Oh, were Watch they bartending yeah. or something? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're really nice. They asked me to come on and talk about politics. And I was like, the only thing I really care about is like assisted suicide. And like after they after we were done, they were like, I mean, they were like, let's not talk about your favorite political hunks. <laughs> because like I was like, it just was like, I just think people have the right to kill themselves and I'm fine with it. And it was like they were like, all right, this is a dark episode. Let's move on to your favorite hunks. Um, so funny. Okay, let's take our okay, calls. Take our calls. Oh, do you have three reasons why you're qualified to give advice? I feel like we've we've already. Well, yeah, that's easy. I'm honest. Okay. Um, okay. I'm old. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. I've been through from poor to rich to poor to you know. It's, it's episode eighteen, right, of your podcast, worst ever podcast, where you go through your life story, and I just want everyone to go and listen to that because you live the fucking life, dude. Oh my god! And then also, you know what else you should listen to what? is Leah Tao's "Strangers." Okay, I did an ep- That's how I started in the whole, telling the story because, and I didn't know who she was. Have you? Do you know her? No, she's amazing. I could lie, but no, no, I don't. you should listen to her podcast. It's great. It's called "Strangers," um, and I did it, and it got a huge reaction. Yeah, and um, yeah. So that if you want to even get more in depth with my life, go to that too. Okay, well, yeah. because it's like it's a wild ass story. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It's not one of those like, wow, he's lived a great. No, he's lived like a life. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's take some phone calls then. Hey, malls, Christina, guest. You guys are great. I'm assuming the guest is great because they usually are. Uh, so I am a 21 year old female. I live in Ohio, in one of the major cities. And I just got a new boyfriend in the past couple months. And I don't have any issues with him. We're doing great. However, we both have dogs. And mine, they're both about a year and a half old. And he adopted his from a shelter a couple months ago. And I've had my dog, Paul, since he was eight weeks old. Not that that's really relevant, but they keep getting in fights over resource guarding, and it really bums me out that I can't bring my dog over to his place anymore. Uh, I mean, be short of hiring a behavioral expert, I'm not exactly sure what to do. I mean, I'm pretty sure we might just have to keep them separated, but I was wondering what you might think of it as a fellow dog owner and woman. Thanks. Love the show. Please keep it up. Okay, so first of all, I thought you said resource gardening, so and I. I was like, "What?" I'm like, "What kind of like cucumber fight bullshit is this? Like, <laughs> yeah, what is going on? Like, that. they're fighting over squashes in the yard. Like, I didn't understand." <laughs> Secondly, Wagon Stuff's first name is Paul, so I do love a dog named Paul. I thought about like how funny it would be to name a dog Greg, yeah, and just like go around a dog park being Greg, Greg, Greg. I mean, that's my stepdad's name. Okay. That would be like kind of a, a sick diss. <laughs> um, listen, I have you have to hire a behavioral like person to begin with because if your dog is territorial around you like that, it's an issue, and you don't want to wind up in the situation I am, which is that I probably I can't date probably for like the next five to nine years probably because I don't think I'm going to lose wags anytime soon and like no one can make it through wags and it's obviously that obvious that they're 
I mean, they're trying to figure out who the alpha is, or they're trying to prove that they're the alpha. Absolutely. And it's always about like, stay away from my bed. Right. Go, don't go near my food, human. Because you were saying that the, what is it? Guarding? Resource. Resource guarding. Resource guarding. So like, I'm food human. Like, I'm the person that gives Wags his food. So if you come near me, like, you're threatening his whole ecosystem. And, like, I've come to realize that. I've also come to realize that a lot of the times the barking, he just wants you to get down on the floor and be like, hey, right. I'm paying attention to you. Right. So, like, that's, like, the new thing that I've realized for years. I'm like, I've always just been like, I'm really sorry. There's nothing I can do about it. But instead, I'm like, to my guests, I'm like, yo, just, like, touch him a lot. Well, like, when you go out of town, do you have someone else feed your dog? Christina will stay sometimes, but usually he flies with me. Wags is a traveler, so we have matching travel outlets or outfits. So it's so funny because like <laughs> every single time it does take him a little bit of an adjustment to get used to me being here. And yeah, right. like so he'll like he misses her so much when she's gone. Like he'll just sleep on her a pile of her clothes. Yeah, all he'll, day. Go, he'll sleep in my closet. Like yeah, because yeah. he just wants to be near her smell. And it's stuff very like that. sad. It's yeah. very but like you know. But the then he warms up to me, and then we get a little routine, and he like is excited he'll sleep with me and it's nice and yeah. he does love you mm -hmm. like if i say like auntie christina he gets really excited he yeah. knows exactly who you are what about you and the two chihuahuas so like my two trouble. chihuahuas so desi and ricky okay um <laughs> male and female yeah um and i had a litter with them also Oh, okay. teacup chihuahuas and intentionally no it was an accident because i i, I went an idiot i it was my first Part dog. Of the problem. Yeah, I know. No, it's I know. Not but okay. they um, and I named every single one of them after the Seinfeld cast, <laughs> and they were all boys. It, so there was an Elaine, and that's so but it was cute. a boy. That's really um, cute. So yeah. So um, and my sister has one of them too. Oh, um, yeah. So which one does she have? She has. Well, she renamed it. Uh, whatever she. I don't even know what she named. But it, it was Kramer. I, I think it was actually Jerry. Okay, yeah. not bad. Not a bad one to have. So. My dogs, one of them is very friendly. Yeah. And they're both teacup chihuahuas. And one of them is not. Desi's not so friendly. But Desi, his instincts are 100% right. Yes. So when he's not into somebody, like, I'm aware of it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he's territorial with his family, you know, environment. But yeah. Speaking of. <laughs> I know. Sorry, Wags. That's right. But Ricky, Ricky will just go to anybody. Yeah. yeah, yeah. See, that's scary too. That's like having a dumb kid. Yeah, and you kids. Know? I don't let kids around Desi because he it's they're too close to his size. Yes, and he freaks out. I do worry about that too. That's also been a big like. I not only can I not get married or date, but I definitely can't have kids. Well, I think it's different when you're pregnant and the dog's around you because the dog knows right. and is sensitive to it. Yeah, so you'll probably be okay. I mean, Wags would probably want my placenta for himself though. Well, like you can get it in kind capsules of, though. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Just, just sprinkle it in the food or something. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but like that's the kind of yeah. weirdo he is. I mean, he's a real freak like that. Look, like here's the thing is that he, he, you got to get the behavioralist in either way. Like just do it while they're young. I didn't get wags into intensive training until he was like five. And like he's still he's smart. So he knows all the commands. He just doesn't listen to any of them. He's like, bitch. I've been disrespecting you for 11 years. Like, yes, I know how to respect you, but I've, I have I know changing. I don't have to. Right. Um, I mean, he also wasn't neutered for a while. And if you got, if he got his dog from the pound, which by the way, I, I don't want to accuse you of anything, but it did sound like you had a little bit of judgment in your voice when you talked about your boyfriend's dog being from the pound. It did, did you sound, hear that? It did sound like that. You heard that, yeah. right? No, yeah. I heard it too. Okay, good. Okay. See, because sometimes I get well, accused I, of hearing a little bit well, too much. Also, dogs are very much like their owners. So yeah. I'm wondering if she's putting that kind of. Devil's in the details, my friend. That is what it, I'm saying. Into, with the other dog. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? And yeah. he's sensing it. Yeah. Or she, whatever. It, they you know, do. Yeah. yeah. Paul. They, yeah, him. Paul's, Paul's picking up on your negative yeah. vibes. And I don't know where Paul came from, but maybe you should think about that. Um, but, you know, I, <laughs> I think you're giving a lot of shit to this shelter dog who probably had his nuts for too long. There's probably that. Right. I, I, I wonder what would happen if they switched dogs for like a weekend. That's smart. Ooh. That's really smart. Let's see what, like, let's get the scent in there. Let's see how he yep. reacts. Let's see how Paul reacts with the boyfriend. 
<laughs> Sorry, I just to like raw dog your name, Paul is oh. like nuts. I mean, wagon stuff is Paul J. Wagon stuff, Esquire. Like he has three, na- four names, you know. But like, but just Paul is crazy. Yeah. I love it. It's wild, girl. Paul. Oh, good luck, Paul. Yeah, I mean, and what's up with the other dog too? Anyway, yeah, stop touching your boyfriend's shelter dog. Get a behaviorist in there anyway. Maybe swap for a weekend, and uh, you know, maybe also dump him. You, how you, you're young. You don't need a boyfriend. Go have fun. That's not even that wasn't on the table. <laughs> I know that wasn't on the table for her, but she called my show, so I'm gonna right. say maybe you don't need a boyfriend. Maybe you could just go have fun. Uh, as yeah, a, she is 21. Yeah, go. I'm exactly like whenever these people call and they're like, "I'm 21, I have a problem." I'm like, just dump him. Like, just what are you doing? Get over it. Just switch dogs. For yeah. A uh, <laughs> get rid of Paul. Um. Okay. Uh. Let's take another call. Hi, Mal, Christina, and Gif. Um, I got caught off on the last message, so I'm going to try and make this as concise as possible. Um, I'm having a workplace issue. I work for a pretty big printing corporation, and right now I am a lead graphic artist. However, I went to school for writing, and that's what I'm trying to pursue in my professional career, not just creatively anymore. So I have been branching out into the marketing department, trying to write things for them, such as press releases and whatnot. My issue is that I am having a workplace conflict with a new guy that has been hired in the marketing department. And to just sum him up really quickly, I think he probably voted for Donald Trump. And he just seems like that guy that wouldn't take you to prom because you had fat thighs. And that's basically like the type of persona that he gives off. Um, So the issue that I'm having with him is that he has sent me to meetings um, or invited me to meetings, you know, via email, and then the meetings actually held in a different room. So I end up sitting in a room by myself for like 10 minutes while a meeting is going on. So that's been really embarrassing. Um, When he edits my work, he's not concise or clear. So it's been really hard for me to move forward. And then he'll bring a revised draft to a meeting that I was not a part of. Um, which I think is a little undermining and a little weird. Um, and the latest thing that he's done is I had a draft already approved by the, by the vice president and he made all of these comments and circles and everything saying that things need, needed to be rewritten or deleted. And at the very end of the paper, he wrote, rewrote, um, we decided to go in a different direction. And so I was like bawling in the middle of Target because I thought, that I had been kicked off this writing assignment that I had worked on for the past four or five days. Um, Long story short, the VP says that I'm doing a good job. I believe that I'm doing a good job, but I feel like this guy is just trying to get under my skin or undermine me for some reason, and I'm not sure why. And I don't know if I should say anything and risk being that person who can't take criticism on her work or come across as too over-emotional, or if I am being over-emotional, and maybe just need to take a step back from what I'm doing and realize that he's maybe just doing his job. I don't know if he's just a dick or if this is just kind of how the corporate world works. Um, if you have any advice at all, I would really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Love the pod. Hope you guys have a great day. Bye-bye. Well, this is why the corporate world sucks. Like, whenever I work in a job like that, I'm like, no one gets anything done all day. Like, you do, like, three things in a day, and it's gone through so many unnecessary hoops. Secondly, is this guy her superior or just yeah. some guy in the – oh, he is her superior. Okay, but still, listen, my take on this – Yeah. I'm gonna be completely – and especially in this day and age now with what's going on with women Bring a at gun work. to work? Oh. No. <laughs> so I'm sorry, bring, bring I a gun to work. Uh, sorry, I I'm just talking about women, that. like the whole the whole the whole me too thing and whatever, yeah, right. right? I, I knew, mean I knew where you were going. Yeah. No, I'm just I mean bring a gun to fucking work. Where are where are you, Chicago? Uh, so um you have to my 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 thing is I always confront the person that has been trying to do me wrong. Yes. Because if you don't it's it's again with that alpha thing, like the, the dog thing, right? Yeah. You got to sort of like make your stance and let him know where you're at with this. Yeah. And then 
if your vice president of at the corporation is saying that you're doing a good job, more than likely he's trying to sabotage. Yeah. So you need to let him know that you know that he's trying to sabotage. Yeah. You know, in other words, you have to turn the manipulation around. Yes. Okay. You know what I mean? And then if you have to go over his head, then you go over his head. But you're in a position right now, especially in this day and age, where you can – I would go for it. Yeah. See, I do worry, though. I I, 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 I pussyfoot around shit a lot because I'm just like – Look, this guy's a trumper. I'm not going to win. He's going to do anything he can to make me look bad. And like, you're right. Now's the time. I just hope that wherever she is, is kind of caught up to that mentality. Do you know what I mean? Because like we have a little bit more of like that here. Like, I think people are more in uh, more interested in hearing you on the coast. I mean, if this woman is in Minnesota, did she say she's from like Minnesota or something? Which I'm not sure. I kind of got like a midwest or like a Midwest vibe from her, and that's the only place that that like I worry that like no matter who you are, if you're trying to stand up to a guy in a workplace who sounds completely arrogant, who's doing just the he wants to put a stank on it. It sounds like there's no like real reason behind him. No, and I would Minnesota, Minnesota is the area code. Great. Right. Fuck, I just guessed that. That was really good. Damn. No, I I don't care. Listen, and I would do it. I would start with emails. Yeah. So it's documented. Documented. And then I would go in person. And then if you have to have an HR person intervene, I'd go to HR. And then if you have to go in front of your vice president and go, listen, I'm trying to do what I can do. Yeah. But I'm being sort of blindsided here. And I don't know which direction you want me to go to with. So here's what I've presented. You tell me w- what you want. Sure. And, and that's it. Go over his head. And this is someone who works in the industry telling you to go to HR, which is something I've never heard anyone who works in this business say before. Well, it's corporate. So you. Yeah. Yeah. But and, I mean. But now see HR is changing. To, it, it, go ahead. So yeah. I was going to say like her, the, Minnesota, <laughs> the, the Minnesota factor of it all actually like plays a big role in here because they are not confrontational. Yeah. What I've learned. Yeah. Um. And passive aggressiveness is like the the way to go. Oh, there. I hate passive aggressive. I hate. I hate. It it makes me it's like called Minnesota nice. nothing more. It's called Minis- being Minnesota nice. I hate it. Yeah. I. I also. I, it's very I, difficult. And for me being to a deal guy, with. I think that when a woman stands up to you and you are like, you got to shock him. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because then he's not going to be able to react. Yeah. If he if he feels like he can step on you, he's going to step. Many times. I mean, he's doing it already. Yeah, so you can't let him do it. Yeah. And you also have to know is like, how much is this job worth it? And like, maybe move on if it's not. And here's the other thing, too, is that like, let's not get precious about writing ad copy. Do you know what I mean? Like, I know that you want to flex certain muscles, but like, to me, in a way, it's where I would say, you know what? I'm going to go home and work on my zine, or I'm going to go home and work on my private writing project that. So that when some report that I worked on that, like, you know, it sounds like you're being a little bit precious about what this stuff actually is, which is just like corporate paperwork. And I would just say, you know, maybe if you take the the uh, emotion off of this stuff that ultimately, like, it sounds like you're just trying to find a way to do something creative at a job that's not traditionally creative, Maybe just stop, uh, maybe in a way, like kind of reassign some of that emotion to something that you actually want to work on that you can be proud of that you'd want to show people because it doesn't matter if you write the best like ad copy of your life. Like you're not going to go around saying to your friends like, dude, I wrote this ad copy that just like when I go home at night, put my head down on the pillow, I feel so fucking creatively fulfilled. Like she's trying to also look for some sort of creative fulfillment in all of this. So there's two sides of it here. Which is like, maybe don't be overly precious about anything in a workplace when you're picking up a check and work on your, when you, if you want to do art, work on your art, you know, in addition to taking him to HR. I would just take him down. Yeah. <laughs> don't bring a gun to work, you guys. No, I was please. just kidding. I was Jesus. just kidding. I'm so anti I don't even, no, I mean, I am anti gun. <laughs> I'm anti gun too. I just like, I don't even. You know, I just think sometimes my mind goes to extremes. Um, <laughs> Have you ever confronted someone in a work situation? I thought you were going to say with a gun. Like, no. literally. <laughs> I, yeah. Uh, have I? No. You know why, though? You seem very confrontational. I am very confrontational. And people uh, mistake that um, for, like, I, I I sort of set the tone immediately. Yeah. It's it's a status thing, and uh-huh. I learned that in acting, obviously, because somebody has the high status, yeah, and someone has a low status, yeah. And I try to have that high status. I think that's why Christine and I have this weird banter because we're yes. both trying to have high status. How do you do that? Um, I think it's my I think it's being brutally honest with people and just setting the tone. Like I, you know, 
I, I, I don't know how to explain it. I just, I go in with a certain way, whether it's family or work, and either they get it or they don't. Yeah. But they get nervous to like come back at me. Do you know who he reminds me of? Who? Steven Myers, my best friend, Steven Myers. When you were like, oh my God, you, because when I said I want you on the podcast, you were like, oh my God, most people think I'm a dick. And I'm like, no, like you're like my friend Steven. Like most of my friends are like, he's so mean to you. Like, how do you do that? And yeah, I'm like, yeah, yeah. he's my favorite person because he's like, it's not mean. First yeah. of all, it's not me. And like, it's like actually like the, the fact that he takes the time to do it means that he cares about me. No, absolutely. Yeah. You know? I, like, I, I'm not to name drop, yeah. but my best friend and my producing partner is Alyssa Milano. Yeah. Okay. So we're in business together. We've been best friends for 23 years. Okay. There, it, it's, I'm the one person that is brutally honest with her, whether it's her family or, or, or I'm the only one that gets away with it. Yeah. I'm the only one. Celebrities need that too, by the way. Everyone needs it. They need that one person to say, you know what? This is wrong or don't do that or this is my opinion. At least take the time the next 24 hours to think about it. And if you still want to do it, then do it. Yeah. You know? I'm impressed by her career. She's constantly reinventing herself. I thought the uh, the line of like – uh, did she do a line with MLB or something? So we, I, I also work on that line too. Yeah. It's called Touch by Alyssa Milano. Yeah, I was very impressed by that. So it started with the MLB, but now it's every major league sport. Wow. So it's MLB, NFL, NBA, um, soccer, NASCAR. Wow. Um, college, all the colleges. Uh, so like in terms of NASCAR, should I be getting into that? Oh, NASCAR is amazing. Is it really fun? It's, it's the one sport that I really like. That okay. was like, uh, like I went and did a, we went down to Daytona uh, to, to promote the line. Sure. When we first launched it. And I went in a pace car. Uh-huh. And I was freaking out. It was amazing. Yeah. And the actual races, it, because it's such a communal kind of environment because they do all these like um, trailers in the middle of the park and stuff uh -huh. and so all the families because these guys are on the road all the time so all the families are traveling with them they have like traveling playgrounds and like so everyone's like kegs and barbecues and it's just i so, love shit like that it's, it's like a carnival yeah. all the time it's so much fun well i went to boston college so i did like definitely grow up on that tailgate culture which i just love um i have deep conditioner in my hair i just realized by the way just gonna let you guys know you have what Deep conditioner on my hair. Oh, okay. Yeah, just letting you guys know. I just touched my head. I was like, why is my head so wet? I have deep conditioner on my <laughs> hair. Okay, uh, let's take another call. Hey, Malls and Crew. So I have a couple of questions that I've been trying to figure out for a while now, and I just can't find the answers to. So the first one is, to what extent is, not to sound like an essay prompt, but... <laughs> To what extent is wanting to change yourself and wanting to evolve you not accepting yourself versus you just wanting to be a better person? And the second is, where is the line between healthy independence and a solitary state of being? Um, because... I I see myself as as an independent individual, but sometimes I'll just realize that I haven't seen any friends or anyone for a week or two weeks or three weeks, and I just question that balance. Uh, so, yeah, and I, I'm not sure it's relevant, but I'm 21 and I live in New York City. Uh, so yeah, I hope that you have a good episode. Bye. Male Lena Dunham in the house. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, what was that? I, the first question is like, well, I was just, Christina like played it. She did herself the disservice of playing it back so she could try and understand it again. It doesn't, it's, it doesn't really make sense. I mean, like, I don't know. Are you a shitty person? Like, do you do things that you know categorically are wrong or not serving you? Um, if you try and improve upon that, that's just called being a person and growing up. But if you're trying to like, yeah, I, it's like the denying parts of yourself. And that's the thing that you're not accepting. As yeah. If you shitty. go out and buy like a disco shirt, cause you think it's going to make you a different person. then like, that's, yeah. that's not thinking. Well, first of all, a, a I, you, you, you can't change yourself. Right. 
uh, I mean, you can improve yourself, but you're sure. not it, in your core is going to, that's it. Yeah. This is who you are. Yeah. Um, you can't change others. Obviously we know that. Right. Yeah. So, I, I mean, it, it, there's a lot going on here only because, A, you live in New York City and that whole independent thing. Like, I was like, how is that possible in New York City? Right. It, it, like, and there's something deep going on here. Well, okay. So he's thinking, he's overthinking the first question. Like, he's gone a step too far yeah. on the first question where it's like, once you're there, you're like, you're just wasting time. Like, it doesn't, there's no like, there. it's not, it, it doesn't need to be like esoteric. Like, do you need to change certain things or not? Are you happy being alone? I like being alone. A I'm lot. a. I love being alone. Love it. Fine. No, there's nothing wrong with it. At the same time, I'm a socialite. Yeah. And I love. <laughs> I, like you I, an heiress? No. I, I mean, no. I, I mean, I should be. I, yeah. I, I'm like literally. I'm like a socialite, and I love like being social. But I love leaving. Yeah. I'll never host a party. Yeah. Never. You'll never be invited to anything at my house. Uh-huh. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to be in charge you of that. Know, you don't buy the snacks. Same. You no, like I'm not into it. Like yeah. you're not coming over. Yeah. I don't want to hang out at my. I'll meet you. I don't drink at my house. I don't keep wine at my house. Yeah. I don't like. I'm not that guy. We're the same person. I like to go out and have fun with friends and stuff. And then I want to go home. And there'll be maybe three days where I don't see people. Whatever. Yeah. Three weeks is a bit much, but you know. Yeah. Um. I think I actively fight the impulse to be sol- like solid. If I'm left to my own devices, if I don't force myself to go out, I will be like not ha- not having human contact if I had the option but that's not a good thing i recognize sometimes because i don't want to get too comfortable being on my own and not being able to share my life with someone that's my that's where my uh, concern oh i don't in. care about that no i don't care about that either yeah um i don't i <laughs> just fine. like to, i just i don't know i have like only child in my bones and like i feel very proud of my ability to be alone like i'm like Oh, yeah, I like that I can, like, exist in a city and not freak out. Like, I can travel alone and I can go to the movies Can alone. I give a Breaking Bad spoiler? Can we all, like, get over... Can we move past a Breaking Bad spoiler? When... Go ahead. You, yeah, okay, I mean, it's like, over. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> like, the way that you looked at me, I'm like, are you no, watching like, Breaking Bad right now? No, in my head, I'm going, are they... No, I was, I was kind of, oh I was kind of kidding, but okay. you know, there's always someone out there who's like seven years after his shows, and who's f- moles. I'm fucking watching it right now. I'm on uh, season three, episode two. Um, but like when Walter White like goes that like little cabin in New Hampshire after he burns down his existence, and like he's hiding from the guy, like the witness. He's in the you know whatever re- restarting your right. life program. I have always thought like, yeah, that seems like really easy and I could do that. Like put me on the woods with a stack of newspapers and some water and I'm fine. Like, I don't know if like, I don't know if I can go that survivalism far. No, is I necessarily have... the extreme one should go to, but I do know that like I could last I, I quite will, a while. Well, see, I'll freak out. There's two things that will freak me out. Okay. No direct TV. Yeah, <laughs> there's that. And no phone. Yeah. That's when I'll go nuts. Okay, but that so that means that you do crave the human contact, the, yeah. the phone I, aspect. Yeah. I used to be so in love with being alone that like I literally had a therapist tell me like Christina, human beings are social creatures. Like you need that element of life. You yeah, not sustain just being alone on your own. Yeah, and, and by the way, to go back to the she f- told me that several times. <laughs> to go back to the first question, uh, you're 21. So yeah. like when you're 30, you're automatically a different person. And when you're 40, yep. you're a different person. And it's just things that happen to you in your life and you learn. And that's, but so you're, when you were 10, you were a different person, 15, different person. Like, so just get ready, dude. Like, right. things are going to change, but they're going to happen naturally. You're not going to make it happen. You're going to learn, and that's what happens. Yeah. So, and also, if he's only 21, I'm guessing he's just about done with college, or like most of his friends are just about done with college if he didn't go. And, like, that's a huge social shift of your life anyway. Like, right. everything really changes around then. So you're probably just going through, like, a mass change anyway. And so a lot of these questions are going to be, like, irrelevant on the other side of six months. I would just say, like, you know, do, like, the little things that you need to do to be a better person um, if you feel like that's if that's what's missing in your life. I mean, everyone, there's always room for improvement. The one thing I can stand, and that's by the way I call them Malina Dunham, <laughs> is that like I is like I don't think it's enough to recognize you have a problem and then just be like, well, I'm self-aware. 
Like, no, no, no. Like the self-awareness also comes in when the change, when you decide to make the change to not be that person anymore. And so that's kind of what I want to see out of him is that if there's things that he can like clock as a problem and they're not working for him, then like go ahead and make the change. And then you're not male Lena Dunham. Just have fun. You're 21 yeah. in New York City. Like 20 fun. 20 fun. New York City, like enough yeah. said. I know I would be like too shit faced to make that call. Like yeah. that's the other thing that I I can't live in New York because well, I can't be around that kind of so drinking. Background for me, like I'm the first one in my family to leave the family unit to go to college because we're you know I'm first generation American. Where, where I grew up is you live in your parents' household until you get I'm married man. or you have or you take over the family business. Can I say the name of your family business, Mister Man? That was the first one in New Orleans. Yeah, New Orleans. so his yeah. family owned a suit a suit company called Mister Man, and then my I mom opened a female version called Mi- uh, um, Mrs. His <laughs> <laughs> next door. That is uh, brilliant. And my mom's name is Afaf, and my dad's name is Afif. <laughs> so Afaf and Afif. That is hilarious. Yeah. Okay, keep going. All right, so Sorry. I, <laughs> I, 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 I tell the story of my podcast, but. I auditioned for college in New York without my parents knowing. I literally got into the college and then gave them an ultimatum. Like, either you're going to let me go or I'm going to do it on my own and live on the streets if I have to. But I'm yeah. doing it. So I was like the I was like the guinea pig for the family, like for my brother, for my sister, for everyone. That I was the first one to leave. And I was 17 in New York City in the 90s. So it was like – but I – I had enough of a good head on my shoulders from my upbringing to like know what's right and what's wrong and what I could do. But I experimented with things. I had a great time. I enjoyed my life. I'm a totally different person because I went to New York and lived that life than I would have been if I had stayed in Orlando, Florida with my parents. Yeah. Taking care of whatever clothing store that, you know, at that time, you know. My friend who lived in New York at that time, just about that age, he was banging the chick who hosted uh, Current Affair. Okay. Like you can do anything you want. It's New York City, baby. Like a current wh- affair. She brought it she brought it back. <laughs> she like <laughs> I mean, truly, like when I think about all I see is that pyramid. Yeah. I'm like going, that's all affair. you need to see, babe. And yeah. like that's it. That's New York City, man. Yeah. You can do anything <laughs> no, you want. <laughs> yeah. That's New York City, baby. You can uh, bang the chick who hosts the yeah. current affair. Yeah. What are you doing? Yeah, have sitting fucking around. fun. <laughs> Quit <laughs> analyzing so much. Just go <laughs> enjoy it. Yeah. Jesus. Oh my god. I remember I have a feeling this affair. kid might be an INTJ. An INT oh uh, his personality type. Yeah. Then he can go be friends with Jolie. She's an oh, she's an oh, she's an INFJ. I am an INTJ as well. What the hell are you talking about? Myers Briggs. Oh, we're both in cults. No, um, uh, <laughs> Wags, can you like, n- babe? Can you? I'm sorry, I brought up a current affair. I'm sorry. He's like, you respect her. I'm sorry. Did I touch your stitch or something? Oh my god! I'm so sorry. Anyway, uh, we have a letter. Uh, you're gonna read it. Yeah, I'll read it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, excuse me if I stumble. It's okay. Uh, this letter says, "I, I edit it. yeah, well, don't edit it because it's just real." Um, <laughs> so this letter says, "I ended an, an over seven year relationship in a pretty messy way. Police were called by the neighbors reporting abuse. Four a.m. situation." The landlords wouldn't rent to my boyfriend anymore and asked if I needed to go into hiding, etc. Just to give you an just to give you an idea of the level of how gross it was. I joined Al Anon shortly after that and uh, came to the realization that my ex was a problem drinker and that I was in an abusive relationship. From an outside perspective, it's so obvious, but in it, I couldn't see that. We last spoke over five years ago when I told him he had to stop contacting me and I just quit answering the phone and text messages and emails. I then found on, I then, sorry, excuse me. I then found an item that his grandfather had made for him. When we were last together, his grandpa wasn't doing well and they had a very close relationship. So I felt like I should return the item. Five years later, it's still shoved away in my basement and haunting me a little bit. I just don't know if it's appropriate to do that. Since we broke up, I got together with my husband. We have two kids, 
Side note, my husband is the nicest guy you'll ever meet. My I'll never ex- meet him. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> my ex quit drinking after I kicked him out and after I kicked him out, started therapy and medication. As far as I know, this is still what he's doing. I talked to my sponsor about this forever ago, and she suggested I get this item to him through a mutual friend. Yeah. The thing is, I cut contact with everybody I knew through him when I cut contact with him. I'm not really sure what to do, but I feel like it's not my place to just throw this thing away. But I don't know the best, least drama, including way to return it. Please advise. Thanks, Anonymous. What is it? Progranimous? Progranimous. I think she was just trying to be cute. Okay. All right, well. Uh... Okay, so so simple. I mean, like, how burnt down could these connections with this the front mutual friends be, right? Like, well, it, it, that's not even the issue here. What's the issue? The issue is is that she has no resolution. Okay, she has not resolved this past relationship. You really think so? Hundred percent. Okay. She still has the item. She's always known she's had the item mm. in the back of her head. Yeah. Um, she needs, she needs closure. Yeah. I don't care how happy you are in your marriage and your kids and all that. She wants closure. You want to know that he's doing okay. Yeah. And so, you know what you're going to do. Yeah. It's like a dumb thing to even ask. You he's know it. sober. Like, yeah. it's like, he's in a if, better place that he can ha- handle the situation. It, well, let's hope have. he's sober. We don't, she doesn't even know, let's say, right? Okay, yeah. She thinks he is. Yeah. But you want, she wants to know. Yeah. She wants to know. Okay. So, I mean, with technology the way it is, even if she doesn't know any of her friends, she can track him. Yeah, shoot him an FB. Yeah. Like, just write a little message being like, hey, man, I have the wooden boat or whatever your grandpa gave me. Great, Your grandpa gave you. Like, thought you might want it. Yeah. And, you know, like, he'll and- see you're married. I mean, like, there's no, there's no, like open door on your end you right know what I and mean? let your husband know that you're doing it too totally you know? maybe you know and if 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 your husband is the nicest guy you've ever met then he should be supportive of that yeah you know? just get obviously there's more here than what you're saying i mean in my head it, there's it's a sub it's like subtext you're telling me that you aren't done with this not done in the sense of like you want a relationship with him but it ended so abruptly in such a bad way and i mean you were apologizing in the email about the police and not him not being able to like get you know a, a, an apartment because yeah. of it. like you're apo- you were you were apologizing for him he was abusive yeah so there's still there's still stuff there yeah I mean I don't I don't know I I guess I didn't really take that away as much as I have been in the predicament of having an ex's belongings well no actually maybe I did want closure you're right you're right you're right there's a closure closure issue. Because then, like, why do I'll just throw your Pearl Jam records in the trash? Why do I care? Right. Right. You're right. Okay. Well, or here's another idea. You should submit it to the uh, Museum of Broken Relationships. I heard about. Oh, I saw that on uh, Wags. Is that, oh, Wags. Oh, they, they, <laughs> was it on Wags? It was on Wags this season. So my actually my for like for years we were BFS and we had like a major falling out. We had a broken relationship. Me and the curator of that museum, and so we actually reconnected at the Museum of Broken Relationships. I, I had no idea that existed. I was like going. I was watching Wags, and yeah. I was like, "What the fuck is this?" Yeah, and it was also on The Bachelor the season they've done a lot of they and chelsea they did a lot of great they've gotten a lot of great press coverage but they were right on hollywood boulevard which i thought was genius because like it's the answer to ripley's if you're not like a white trash mess or like whatever like it's, it's not the wax museum but like it has that mass appeal breakups everyone has them yeah, it's genius and it's friendship breakups it's everything it was based off of like a german idea i think they originally did it in germany and then they brought it over the states but they are moving locations. They're currently looking for locations right now. And so you could submit. I mean, when they when they reopen, they could be looking for for some for some reason this is a wooden boat in my mind. I don't know why. Did she say it was a wooden boat? No, she just said her grandfather the grandfather made it. It's him. definitely a wooden boat. I don't know why I feel <laughs> that way. I feel like it was like a, a, a hand whittled boat. Wooden boat. Yeah. I'm just getting heavy boat vibes. All right. But um <laughs> heavy boat vibes return the fucking boat and just see how he's doing and then call it a day or submit it to the museum of broken right. yeah i mean i don't know dude just like just you know make sure you're but also 
full transparency with your husband is 110% necessary. Yes. You do not want to wind up in a situation where you have to go to your uh, husband later and say like, hey, I uh, was trying to do this thing and return the wooden boat to my alcoholic Well, not ex. only that, but like doing it through a friend thing. It's so, and I, listen, your therapist is a, you know, they have the certificate to be a therapist. Oh, I thought you were going to be like a piece of shit. No, no, no. Oh, so, okay. I mean, obviously that person knows what they're talking about. Right. But for me, I'm like going. Do they? Well, here's the deal is then you give it to the friend, right, right. to give to him. And then they're like, oh, how is she doing? Oh, he wanted to know how she. So now you put this person in the middle. Yeah. And it's a back and forth thing when it's like, let's just call it. Let's call it a day. All I care about yeah. is that my ex looks like shit. Right. That's literally all I care right. about. That's all I that's all I dig yeah. for is I'm like, he looks like shit. Right. And then that same week, <laughs> take your kids to fucking Disneyland with your husband. Yeah. And bone your husband yeah. at Disneyland yeah. in the bathroom. Sh- get pregnant and then show up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. 100%. Don't tell anyone for four months and certainly yeah. don't see a doctor. Right. Because you've done it before. You know. You know. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, do we need to take another call? We can. I want to. Yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to lose you yet. Are we getting good? Am I giving good advice? You're giving the bomb advice. And I'm so glad you're here. We have to have you back for a lifetime podcast if you want to do it this season. Yeah, I do. I, I, I want to do whatever the reality one is, too. Uh, um, yeah, I'm mostly broken psychos. We talk about like all different reality stuff. Yeah, that's, Actually, the one I wanna, that's the one I want to do. People love Project Runway, too. And the, we have a very active Facebook community. So can I bring um, the showrunner? And the producers will come to you. Yeah. yeah okay. I mean, I can't have a show. My place is a disaster right now. I no, can't but, have a so, showrunner or so producer from it, Project Runway. Let's do house. it in the middle of the season. That way okay. people have watched like because all star. This is all stars, by the way, which is totally separate than runway. No, I know. OK, so I just want to make sure it's two different. How How is Santino Rice doing, by the way? Um, I, I haven't. I, who knows? I listened to his. Do you remember he wrote his own music for his runway show? Oh, you're talking about from this r- regular runway. Yeah, the right. One that just but won. he's on All Stars, right? Too. He didn't he do a season of All Stars. He, which one's Santino? Santino Rice is like. <laughs> There's so many. All-Stars. He's like the really mean gay guy. He was like the, the real. He was really like divisive and mean. He did. And I think he, he was did. the first season one winner. Oh yeah, so, no, he did, he didn't end up winning, did he? he yeah, I mean. Oh, was, did he win? No, oh, he's remember a, Wendy Pepper died. Yes. Uh, I just found oh, was out. it the Asian girl? Was no, no. It the Asian he girl? judged uh, RuPaul's Drag Race the mm-hmm. first couple of seasons. Yeah, no, I, I don't think he's done All Stars. Oh, okay. If he did, I didn't come on to All Stars until season three. Okay. Um, we're now season six will be airing in January, and then we've already can't put in the can. We've already shot season seven. Okay. So season six is amazing. Okay. Get ready. Really? Yeah. Fabrics flying. Just get fucking ready. It's amazing. Season seven is even crazier. Oh Santino God. was on the second season of right. Project Runway and finished third. Yeah, I was like, he didn't win. Oh, okay. That's why he was so angry. Yeah, probably. But I'll never forget he wrote his own runway music and it comes up on my my shuffle from time to time because, of course, I downloaded it. And uh, it's wild. Well, this season on regular runway, which, yeah. um, spoiler alert, if you haven't watched the whole season, it's it over. But the one of the contestants wrote his own. Oh yeah, but yeah. I feel like that's the move. Yeah. I feel like that's definitely the move. Yeah. So actually, those girls, um, Rachel and Desi from Hollywood Crime Scene, who we had on yesterday, you should have them on your podcast too. Rachel, they both have crazy fucking stories, life stories. I'll take it. We 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 listen. We'll take anyone. They have crazy life stories. So they were joking around. They were saying they want to do a show because like they were talking about Heidi Fleiss and I guess. Heidi, one one of Heidi Fleiss's like moves was she had a guy wanted to like put like a butt plug in her or something, but they had to like fashion one out of a coat hanger, a towel, and a condom, like in some hotel room. And so they were saying we should do Project Ass Plug. Oh my for, god, like, that's you're, hilarious! You know, like you're at the ninety nine cent store Horrible. and. <laughs> <laughs> you make it work like you're at the 99 cent store you have a five dollar uh, budget like create an ass plug go for it and i was just like that is genius so you guys just so you know i just soft pitched that to a major player over at the project runway family oh my god yeah take no. it to the top no you ha- definitely come to us because re- i've already talked to the showrunner about this that in your show would be perfect <laughs> and so um yeah so <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lifetime picking it up. It's actually straight to straight to series. Okay, yeah. so um, <laughs> we're doing it. <laughs> um, let's do one more call. Yeah. 
Hi, Molly. First time, long time. My name is Megan. I am 27. Um, I am working as a paralegal and I am also going to law school at night. Um, the reason I am calling today is because I really hate my job. Um, does not bode well, I assume, to hate your job as a paralegal and be going to law school at night. But I worked at a different legal job before I got this job. I've only been working there for about a year, and I've only been in law school since this past fall. So obviously the process had begun before I got this job. Anyways, um, I do not like it. I hate it a lot. I'm not good at it. It's all paper pushing. It's uh, writing memos that about stuff I don't or cannot possibly understand because I work in a like IP law firm that does a lot of patents for a lot of science stuff and I have no science background whatsoever so it's all basically gibberish like sequence listing like what the fuck is a sequence listing I don't, I don't fucking know dude it's like it's it's beyond my understanding so it's frustrating because I'm somebody that likes to know what I'm doing and uh it's super frustrating for me to not be able to understand or contribute or feel like I'm contributing to my work I feel like I'm I'm just literally pushing paper all day and, and, you know, sending nagging reminders to these old fucking dudes that don't know how to, like, check their dockets or, you know, they can't figure out how to set up a to-do list and outlook. And it's just, like, kind of infuriating. Like, you know, we only have, like, two women that are partners out of, like, 20 dudes at my firm. I don't know. Everything about my job is just, like, ugh, ugh. It just gives me, like, heebie-jeebies. Anyways... Hate it. Hate it, hate it, hate it. Don't get into corporate law. My advice. But, so what I'm calling about is I want to know whether I should uh, try to find another job that perhaps pays less and then have to struggle a little bit more um, versus just keeping this job as long as I can until I maybe get fired for doing a bad job. I don't know. I've never really been fired from a job before, but I feel like there's like a distinct possibility I could be fired from this job, which is kind of terrifying to me. I don't know. Um, anyways, uh, I don't know if it's better to just like cut my losses before it gets to that point and, or if I should just keep going because the pay is pretty good. It's got nice benefits and, it's nice to have something steady while I'm in school. I live alone, so my rent is kind of expensive. I mean, it's it's really expensive if I'm being real. Anyways, I also am severely depressed, so I'm on that journey as well. So, uh, eh, you know what? Just, just please advise. What should I do? Should I quit this shitty, terrible job that I'm bad at and try to find something that I can give two shits about? And then maybe do a little bit better job? Or should I stay the course and just get fired when this job, you know, runs its course? When it's very clear to everyone that I'm bad at it and I can no longer hide it. Anyways, please advise. Thank you. I mean, you could be digging ditches. Let's just face it. Like, whatever it is that you're doing, it's not that bad. Like, who fucking cares? Uh, Who cares? Yeah. I mean, uh, what's her name? Megan. Oh, I hate your name, by the way. <laughs> um, I think Megan is one of the worst names. It's a, ever. Well, I I like it when it's a Megan. Oh. I like someone, a Megan. Yeah, when they're going to be uh, impossible. Megan, listen to me. The fact that you're in law school prays to you. Okay, that's great. Yeah. The fact that you're in a job that you hate and are we're just waiting for someone to fire you, it's embarrassing to women all over the world. You should be embarrassed that you're even having this conversation. Yeah. If you don't like your job and there's a job that you want that you feel that you can contribute to, then you should take that job. But if you're sitting on your ass – and not learning anything in this, even though you don't want to do it, at least take the initiative to try to learn something or at least ask for like how you can like help. I mean, it's like lawyers 
fucking don't do it. Go work at Starbucks then. I was just going to say home goods is hiring, honey. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, or just get married and to a rich man and like other women did Senate in the 80s. Great. And then, and just do that. Like, become a housewife. Yeah. But like, if you are going to be a lawyer, then be a lawyer. If it's not the part of the law that you want to work in, then find that job that you can or, or wait until you, you know, get into that field. Okay. Loose idea. I think she's learning disabled because <laughs> I, I, and I'm being dead. I'm dyslexic. So I say this with like, yeah. I, I honestly think she's learning disabled and she's having trouble with the infrastructure and like the, basically the, the, uh, basically like the flow, like the pat the flow of work. I think that there's something about the way that the paper's hitting her desk, that it's just not clicking with her. And I feel like that's, you know what? It's okay to say this isn't for me. Like, it's okay to say, like, I'm not a science-based person. I'm not right. going to understand this workflow. I'm not going to understand that's, the language That's something here. hard that people grapple with a lot because you think if you can, like, if you put your mind to it that you can do it. But there, that's the hardest thing to realize that there is just some things that you can't do or that your brain doesn't work well for. And you just have to accept that. And people are hired for jobs they are not qualified for every day. So it doesn't like matter that you got the job that doesn't that's not like the sign that this is the right job for you. Uh, you know, you're probably going to get fired to begin with. Like just because you got hired doesn't mean you have to that that was ever necessarily a right fit for you. Um, it also sounds weird and boring. And like, you know, I don't think they have good snacks there. I can tell. Well, not only that, <laughs> but I'm wondering like what kind of I want to know what kind of lawyer she wants to be. Right. Exactly. Like, what is it like? I mean, I, or are you? Do you even care? I, I mean, don't think she wants to work a desk. I'll tell you that. I, know, I, guess, well, I think she uh, wants yeah. to be like D.A. Casey Novak or Barba right. from uh, Law & Order SVU. Oh, Lord. Listen, Do you watch SVU? I don't. I oh. told you I don't watch scripted. Oh, sorry. She's, the only scripted show I watched was... Jeez. Countess Luann was on an episode of Law & Order Fucking SVU. Fucking how great was she this season? Don't tell me it's about Tom. It's about Tom. I have something I'm going to give you before you leave. Don't you remember when she was texting? Oh, oh yeah, oh yeah, Bethany's yeah. They're, they're, I'm like shaking. Going, I yeah, need yeah. an alcohol. I need they're, alcohol. Don't tell me it's about Tom. Oh my god. Please Listen, don't tell me it's about Tom. By the way, it's about Tom. The whole Andy Cohen thing, like the interview, the one on one. which yeah. I wanted to punch her in the face. Yeah. That because I'm like, here we go. I was looking forward to the one on one with Luann. Yeah. And then she was like, so like nice about it, and I was like, you fucking dumbass. Like this is your chance. <laughs> like go. Oh, I was fucking bamboozled. Yeah. You know, and I went with it because. I, you know, at that point, I wanted to prove the ladies wrong. You know, well, did you ever watch before they were house? Like, so there's there's only one housewife in the history of the franchise they've ever given this to, and they gave it to Countess Luann, and it was before they were housewives. And Countess Luann's like entire story from like growing up as a young Native American girl in Connecticut to like right. going to Europe, and like she was this one one this one man fifty years her senior, and then one weekend she meets the count while the guy who's fifty years her senior is out of town. She picks up her shit. She leaves. She moves to America. She marries the count. She becomes a countess. But like this woman is telling stories about, you know, um, being in a car that fell off a cliff, how she got crabs in Europe. I mean, C Countess Luann has lived a fucking life. Like uh, this woman has lived a life. Like now it all like it shades in every all your other questions about what goes on a boutique and everything else. Like, yes, yeah, she absolutely is fucking guys in the bathroom at boutique. 100%. She absolutely is doing cocaine. 100%. Like, oh, it's like it's. I mean, it's allegedly allegedly. I mean, you know, we don't we don't know for sure. <laughs> my big fear is that next time I go to New York, uh, I'm going for my birthday. I'm, I'm afraid I'm going to get I want to go to boutique. but I'm afraid I'm not. I don't oh. have the clout to get in. Uh, uh Oh no! Go to the, you can do it. Yeah, I can get into. But I, Fuck I can yeah, go you can get into like, behind the yeah. kitchen. You know what I did the first season what? of uh, New York Housewives? I went to Zarin Fabrics. Oh yeah, I want to go too. It's a must. Yeah. <laughs> did you like pretend you were fabric shopping? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I do need something reupholstered. Yeah. I have a family. I have a family heirloom coming. Do you out. want her back on the show? I'm Bobby. But, no. Oh my god. By I can't the way. stand her either. Listen. So. By the way, sorry, law school person that we've turned. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> just get just your shit together, get, Megan. Quit or just or, or if you're trying to get fired, Shoot so you get off the pot, Megan. Is she? Uh, my question is, she's trying to fucking fire, get fired, so she collects yeah. unemployment. Also, one more thing. Like, if you're if you're like worried about being on the struggle bus because you're going to change jobs, like maybe consider living with a roommate for a while so that you right. don't have to. I, so I live alone. And that right. was like when I was like, oh, Megan, fucking rip my eyeballs out. I've had enough. It's right. too early for this. It's like it's 2 p.m. and it's too early for this. And put down the rosé. Yeah. 
Right. <laughs> Should have sounded a little sloshed. But um oh wait, so Zarin Fabrics continue. Okay, yeah. So um yeah, I listen, Luann is she's gold. She's yeah. gold to me. Um, when she's you went gone. to Zarin, were Johan and None Francois' of them. I didn't see any of fingerprints them. all I didn't over? See, I the... didn't see a one of them. I was so upset. I know. I was so. I did see when I was in Atlanta um, a couple months ago. Yeah. Um, I saw Phaedra Parks at the airport. That's exciting. And I literally walked right up to her and I just said, "Everybody knows I love you." And I walked right by. <laughs> and she goes, "Thank you." And I just like walked by. <laughs> Is that, that is such a good line. Everyone knows I love, knows. I love you. Um, so, She's a tiny thing. What was I going to say? Oh, I did a so uh, I did a serious uh, Amy Phillips who does all like the Real Housewives. Of yeah, 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 I yeah. did her serious show, and my co guest was none other than Jill Zarin. Shut. And up. I have like I've been to I have no relationship role models, but I will tell you one thing is that if I if I will marry no man less than Bobby Zarin, Bobby Zarin, the best man, the only person you marry, yeah. like the the best. He's not doing well, by the way. Let's all send a prayer to Bobby collectively. Please advise nation. Send good thoughts to Bobby Zarin, my husband, so that I can marry him when Jill passes right. away. But um, the flight to when she took her when he took her to hello, yeah, yeah that <laughs> that was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and he's like he's like already in the car yeah. starting the helicopter. Yeah. Like he's yeah. just yeah. heaven. Yeah, the nicest. I saw them at a party once, and I was like, I was with Alyssa, and we were at some party in New York. Oh, so Jill like crawled right up her. No. Oh no. no Jill was a diva. Okay. She thought she was the star at the place. Of course she does. And it was, she wouldn't get in the elevator with everyone else. She had to take a freight elevator, like a separate freight elevator. Oh, okay, Paris Hilton. Yeah, I was like, what the fuck is yeah, happening? Yeah, for the paparazzi, yeah, just to yeah, avoid them. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> And she was wearing a fur. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. I was just like, really? You're just, just because like you're anti-fur? Well, just because I'm like, in this day and age. To be wearing a fur. Yeah, like, come on. Unless it's vintage, you I have mean, no business. Right. Okay. But here's my thing. Okay. She sits down next to me. This is the type of person she is. From the second she, sh- the, from the second she sits down, she goes, do you want to know who you look exactly like? You're her, you're her twin. You're her twin. And I'm like, who? Jody Sweeten. Jennifer Lawrence. She's like, you look just like shit. Can I take a picture of you for Bobby? You look just like Jennifer Lawrence. And I'm like, no, I don't. Like, Wait a minute. No, I don't. Did she take the picture? Yeah. So Bobby has a picture of you? I mean, who knows what she did? But she probably shoved it up her ass. I don't know what she did. I mean, it was probably, it was all a ruse, probably just to, like curry favor. But it was a lot of stuff about um, how she's out here to, uh, she's out here auditioning because she can cry on cue. That was the other thing she wanted everyone to know about her is that she cry on cue. And like, of course, Amy and I are just like eating all this up. Like it's totally normal conversation. We're just like, yes, absolutely. You're acting out here. It's going to happen for you. Like there's only two people on that um, show that I want to meet. And that's Bethany over her. Okay. I, I don't like the new Bethany. Get off my shark tank. Yeah. I, I, yeah. She's on it now. Yeah. I don't like the new Bethany. She's done a lot of good things for Puerto Rico. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. So she's done one good thing in five years. I'm not going to say. I think that it's a major image rehab because you don't watch the show. I'm going to say I'm not going to say it's 100% selfless. I have given her props for everything she's done for Puerto Rico. I've been very vocal about it. What I will say is that I do think it happens to coincide with the worst image she's had publicly ever. And I want to meet... I made it nice. Oh, Dorinda. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. She is. Oh, I have like, I have two things to leave uh, to give you before you leave. Um, I love Dorinda so much. I think she's the perfect housewife. I think she's the only one who has real wealth, class, and taste. And you can tell that because she owns like five dresses that each cost $5,000. Right. And she wears them everywhere. Yes. Like that. Like she wears that one dress yes. with, the, with the red cutouts. Yeah. With the, she she had that made in London, custom for her in 1994, and she has been wearing that since 94. She's wearing it. She's in a dating home a good... dry cleaner. Of yeah, course. she can get it clean easily. She's been wearing. She wears it in Home Good ads. She wears it in her Talking Heads. She wears it on talk shows. Like to repeat an outfit in this industry, it's it's typically not done. But Dorinda has the real shit. She has those the Dolce and Gabbana outfits covered yeah. in lemon. She's got the real money. She's yeah, got the real I, money. I love the Dorinda. I have a hard time. With Richard's passing, I have a hard time with him appearing as a balloon. Um, do you remember? Hi, oh. Reg. <laughs> Hi, Reg. 
Hi, Richard. <laughs> and like, she's clearly like fucking on Valium that or something. That is the best. Oh my God. <laughs> and there's, it's an iPhone video <laughs> of a half inflated balloon. <laughs> she's clearly on Valium like three days after the funeral. And she's going, Hi, Richard. I just hope that <laughs> next season they go back to her house in fucking whatever. Yeah, uh, look, Greystone Manor, yeah. whatever they call it. Because like everything goes wrong. And I'm just like, this is the best episode yeah. of all. Like, Please, you should just shoot at Dorinda's house. Yeah, it's it's the most. First of all, it's also like just gorgeous, and yeah. like Bethany having the gall. I think she said it on her serious show that lasted like six weeks before she and Andy got in a fight. Um, her and Andy got in a fight, and they got in a fight. And her, oh, because you know what? Actually, no, this is what she did. She went to a serious concert, and she was shit faced. And some woman was standing up in front of her dancing, and she threw a drink on her. It turns out it was the president president of Sirius's wife. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, this Puerto Rico shit, she's doing some really great stuff for Puerto Rico. Bethany has some karma to pay back. It's like, wow. you don't throw a drink on the president. So then how did advice. how did Andy get involved? He called because her out on it? Because he has Radio Andy, and he was the one who gave her the show. And so he's like, you can't throw a drink on the president of Sirius' wife. And, you know, she's probably, like, Greek chorusing it up or whatever it is she does to... You know, and a Carol, oh, their friendship is so fucking toxic. I can't even tell you, it makes me sick. I love Carol Raswell. I don't. I mean, you might know her in real life. I don't. And love her. I, I don't know her at all. I. You know what? I would say that Carol's subordinates to Bethany disgust me, and that I feel like if I w- if I knew the two of them in real life, I would be terrified to be around them. Like those are the type of people that you think they're mean girls. Well, first of all, they they make eye contact like on the bus or like when they're on a bus or something together, and all the girls are talking. They make eye contact while they're having discussion, and then they do like these little like. Like, yeah, but it's like, honey, but, you're on the same show as I know, them. but let's look at the bigger picture here. Yeah. It's Carol and Bethany, right? Yeah. And then let's look at the interior. We have Dorinda. Yeah. We have, um, bug eyes, um, uh, Ramona, Ramona, Sonia. Yeah. Luann. Yeah. And now the new girl. What's her name? Uh, not, uh, Jules is gone. No. Um, the one that got arrested for... Oh, the, Tinsley. Tinsley. Okay, well, Mortimer. Look, I have an expression and it applies here. And it, apply, this, it couldn't apply to a better situation. L- look around you, anywhere you are. Yeah. Those are your people. Okay? I, I agree. Like, so, like, they need to... The fact that they think that they are above people on the Absolutely. show that they also pick up the same paycheck for, you're not better than them. But... No, they need they, everyone. They need each other to yeah. create the show. Like if it's that cast is just genius. Yeah. Right? So, but for them, it's like they know what they're doing. Like it's like Bethany knows she's been in production. Yeah. You know? She knows how the cameras work. And I can she tell knows, yeah. I know she. I mean, yeah. maybe it's my maybe that's my experience of just being like I know what you think you're doing versus how it's appearing on camera, and I'm insulted that you think I can't see that. Right, but we're but, not the norm. No, you're right. You're right. We're very special people. That's right. Well, it's been huh. incredible to have you on this show. You know There's what I'm someone, so excited I'm, about? I tapped you for this. What? That you didn't bring up my brother once. Oh yeah, no. And I appreciate that. Oh no, I did no. Thank I mean, you. well, I mean, to be honest, I'm going to be honest with you. Can I give a, a no, Can I give a note? Yeah. No, no, not about. Actually, the note is for Assad. Um, I think wild thoughts. I think wild thoughts is actually the words wild thoughts are jammed into that song inappropriately, and wild thoughts should have been a two syllable word instead of like <sighs> instead of like one, two one syllable words. That's my that's my note. Listen to me. Do you know that my brother has no education whatsoever? <laughs> And I say that with pride. <laughs> he did not graduate high school. He dropped out at 15. He has no, he, I don't know if he can read. I'm not going to sit here and lie to you. Um, so he was a ninth grader when he dropped out, you know, so. I don't know if he can read. I, and I love my brother to death. But everything that happens with him is on accident. Yeah. And he doesn't even know he's doing it. <laughs> So that's just yeah. the golden rule. If anything, DJ Khaled, yeah. just know that <laughs> it wasn't a planned thing. Right. Okay. Right. It, like everything sort of just like snowballed. The baby didn't really go in the hot tub, did it? Because you can't put an infant in a hot tub. I, don't, I wasn't there for that photo shoot, but it's possible. <laughs> I, I mean, it's okay. my brother. Okay. It's possible. Well, I a hope it was a quick. I hope it was a quick in and out. Yeah, sort it of thing, looks like he's photoshopped. The boil on. like a turkey. I mean, in the, that. it does look like he's photoshopped. Yeah. On. But that baby. Is going to be rich forever because he's an EP. Yeah, he's an EP. He's rich forever. And he's the 
and I'm not saying because I'm his uncle. He is the sweetest little boy. Aww. Like it's so weird. Like I've never been with a baby that's like so calm. Yeah. And we were fucking crazy kids. Yeah. Anyways, I appreciate that we didn't go on through talk about. Oh the, no, the, uh, I mean that's not what I'm. I mean, that's not what I'm here for. No, I know. I didn't. Uh, know it's actually it just like a funny aside too. Like I was listening to the podcast for I don't know. I don't even think that was brought up. I think Stephen mentioned it to me. Maybe four weeks after you guys are recording. But I mean, we were really, I was initially in this for the Jody. Oh my God. I got involved on a ground level for Jody. Yeah. And then I stayed around for the, you know, great co hosting. And then just like you guys have the most, I wouldn't say like random guests, but like they are exactly, they are like, they are are exactly right for a certain demo. And like you guys hit that demo really fucking hard. Like every week. And you just do a great job with it. I think you guys do a great job. It's a great concept. And check it out. It's fun. And I'm very interested by Christine. She seems like actressy. She's, um, Yes. She's actressy? <laughs> well, no, she's she's just, she's a perfectionist where yes. I'm just like, whatever. Yeah. She's like, and she's like very anal retentive and by the books and everything is, like, I don't handle any of our emails and stuff because yeah. she's like, I, if, you, if you're going to read it, then I need you to send it, at, make it unread again so that you know I can see it. Yeah. She handles all our, like, financial stuff. She's that girl. Well, I had a conversation with Stephen early on where I said, listen, I said, Christine Lakin's responsible for all that Hollywood darling shit. I said, that is, she put that together. I 100%. Said, she pitched that. She's driving that. She was the one who got the other two attached. I said, I can promise you that. I said, I can just see it in her. She's the one who does the work on that. Like, yeah, yeah. She does the like work. She and fights so, for them too. Yeah. Yeah. She fights for them. Yeah, like, because it's a collective thing. So like, yeah. they want new stuff. She like, she's, she's very hands-on as a producer. They try to kick out Bev. No, 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 no. Be- Bev is going to have a really good storyline this season. Oh, really? Yeah. Miscarriage? <laughs> what? Um, That's hilarious. No, uh, no. it's a comedy. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's so a, it's a light miscarriage yeah. comedy. I mean, that's, I mean, what? That, that's, I mean, the big sick was huge this year. Who knows what's yeah. next? Worst ever's on it this season. We just did a, like a, we shot it. Oh, you did, you did. Just like, like a, a little. A bumper, yeah. Um, and then, um, no, this, this season of Halloween Darling is gonna be really good. No, you have to, uh, you have to, you have to come on our podcast. I'd love to. I would love to come back with Christine because then you can see how different we are. Absolutely. And um, I want to do your reality show one. Yeah, of course. We do that one over the phone, so we can do that like whenever. Like, and, and you love the phone, I love so the this phone. is perfect. Yeah. We can do that whenever. Great. Um, okay. Thank you so much for being here. Where can people find Worst Ever Podcast? Worst Ever Podcast. Uh, Twitter, Worst Ever PC. Instagram, Worst Ever Podcast. You can email us at word, Worst Ever Podcast at gmail.com. And then me at Alec Led. A L E C L E D D. Yeah, double On, D. Just to d- make it different. The double Ds. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, you guys, thank you so much for being here. Christina, I love you. Wags. God damn it. Uh, Paul, have a great doggy life. And what was it? Sustainable gardening? <laughs> oh, yeah. What was it? No, it was uh, <laughs> re- resource gar- guarding. Oh, yeah. Resource guarding. Okay. And yeah. Sustainable gardening. Yeah. All right, you guys. Have a great day. Bye.